Joining us right now is our chairman, Dr. Somnath. Sir, a lot of uh, focus and interest around asteroids. Uh, how real is the threat from them, sir? We know that at least in the seven, next seven years, there are two very close approaches towards Earth. How real is the threat, sir? See, humanity has a problem, fundamentally, because our lifespan is only 70, 80 years. Yes. And we don't see such catastrophic events in our lifetime. So we take it for granted. These are not likely. But if you look at the history of the world or the universe, these events are very frequent. That is approach of an asteroid on the planets and its impact. Possibly, I have watched it, one of the asteroid hitting uh, Jupiter. Mm -hmm. You remember that, I think, uh, Schumacher Levy hitting. Yeah. Uh, so if such an event happens on Earth, I think the, all of us are extinct. So it is only to bring that awareness. These are not possibilities, but these are real possibilities we must prepare ourselves for. And we don't want this to happen to our Earth, Mother Earth, but because we, are, we want the entire humanity and all the life forms to live here. But we can't stop it. We have to find alternates to it. So we have a method by which we can deflect it. We can protect the Earth. If you know a near Earth asteroid can be taken away, but sometimes it may not be impo even impossible also. So situations can come like that. So there are many technologies which are required to be developed. Basically the prediction capability, the ability to send uh, heavier props up there to deflect it. Then uh, join working with many nations on standards and protocols to handle the situation. Observation improvement uh, using ground-based or space-based observatories. Many such things are to be done. Sir, at the same time, a lot of chatter around planetary defense, several agencies working on it. How do you see these approaches and would India ever be part of it, sir? It's a chatter in the beginning, but it will take its concrete shape in the days to come. Yeah. It will always be like that because we don't have to worry about that part. When the real threat becomes, I believe you know, humanity will join together to work on it. We are, as a leading space nation, we must be ready to take responsibilities for it. Because it's not just for India alone, it's for the whole of the world that we must take uh, on us, on us to prepare ourselves, our ability, technical capability, uh, programming capability to do that, and also ability to work with other agencies. That's what we are on it. At the same time, uh, the whole Gaganyaan mission has seen several experiments going on, tests going on, several lined up for the year. How is it panning out, sir? It is a long journey, uh, yeah. difficult journey, and we are attacking each one every day, uh, trying to do the managerial task as well as executional, technical executional task. Mm. Uh, there are challenges, of course, in terms of numbers or test. Yeah. Compared to the regular launch vehicles, uh, the number of tests are huge uh, because the qualification requires that type of demanding. Mm. And uh, the entire, entire success is scrutinized by communities uh, other than ISRO because there are companies who will look at its uh, reliability uh, very critically before we authorize uh, people to fly. So there is something called human rating uh, and high levels of reliability building on this. So all these are happening at various levels. Then we have to conduct missions without any flow. Uh, that also is a huge task. So all of these are going well. Uh, of course, little bit stretching of the times are come happening, but I am not concerned about it at this moment. Is that why you said it should be so reliable that you can put a head of a state in that? Yeah, it should be like that. Yeah. No, if every life is precious, yeah. I think it should be made for the head of the state. True. <laughs> I believe. Yeah. My final two questions, sir. One, uh, this information coming in that ISRO has perhaps looked at the design for Indian Space Station, at least the module one. Yeah, the design is ready. It's actually on my table, the whole of the design uh, protocol and design book. Uh, it's beautiful to see that uh, we are able to conceive such a uh, first part of the Bharati Andhrishu station that can be loaned using our current rocket. Uh, but that's not enough. We have to scale it up bigger. So a new rocket is also needed and a bigger space station module is needed. So we have divided the module into five different units. The first two that will be launched by the current rocket called LVM3 and next three will be launched by the new rocket NGLV. A lot of interest around uh, lunar sample collection and return mission. I believe ISRO is also working on that. Yeah, essentially what we are speaking today are to create the enthusiasm and interest in this domain. Uh, the background work is technical, much more involved. Uh, that's happening. Uh, we have configured a very complex mission of two rockets to handle this uh, four modules up there and dock and take it to moon. Then collect the sample and come back. So this detailed engineering work has to happen now, whereas the preliminary work is already done. Thank you, sir. Thank you for speaking to us.